You ever have one of those days when you wake up and you think to yourself, self, I'm going to do this today. So all of your energy gets spent working towards doing what you would like to do. And then at some point, somebody comes along with another idea of what they want you to do. Well, it just so happens that my kids happen to come along and say, Daddy, will you make us a swing? To which I promptly said, Okay. Because <laughs> I love my kids and my girls, they're very, very cute. So, And they've got me wrapped around their fingers. So I'm going to switch gears uh, from making the caliper project to making a swing. So uh, I've got this material. I've got some uh, two by 10 material that I'm going to use to make a seat. It's just going to be real simple. It's going to be a round seat with a hole in the middle of it. We're going to put some rope through it, hang it over a tree, and see who falls first. <laughs> They'll probably let me test it out to make sure it's going to be all right, which I'll probably do anyway. But uh, at any rate, um, I'm going to film this, and uh, you can watch it if you want. Maybe I'll just film how everything goes, and then uh, we'll take a ride on the swing together, huh? How about that? So that is the... Projectus Interruptus. Let's get started. It was a lovely day, so I thought that I would take the material outside, set it up on my saw horses, and cut the two pieces that are going to make up the seat to approximately 20 inches in length. Okay, after having done an extensive amount of hand planing to get this thing to a point where it's acceptable, um, I've determined that this is going to be the top, and the next thing to do is to lay out how big a round this seat is going to be, and I've determined that 16 inches is probably going to be alright. Some might say that's too big, but hey, this is what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use my beam compass here and lay out the diameter and that'll work so I guess the next thing to do is to somehow cut this out and uh, I haven't decided yet but I'm I, I might cut a back bevel on it of a couple degrees um, just so there's clearance for the legs. But anyway, let's try to get set up with the bandsaw or figure out some sort of setup to uh, get this thing cut out. So, moving on. Okay, uh, this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to kind of remove the bulk of the material around the seat so that I can, I don't have so much to remove when I use the bandsaw. saw. Um, this is the setup I've got because my table saw fence will not reach this width. I, I cannot obtain this width with my uh, unisaw fence system. So I've got my straight edge clamped here and I'm just going to take it slow and easy. Um, if something goes horribly wrong, then we'll have it on film. So I don't think that it will. I'm just going to go real slow and easy with it and we'll see what happens.
Now, before we uh, put it up on the bandsaw, I gotta find the center. So I'm just gonna go corner to corner, find the center roughly, and then drill a quarter inch hole because that's the size of the dowel pin that I'm using. I've got a Forster bit, quarter inch Forster bit chucked up in the drill. And so we're roughly center there. So we'll shoot a quarter inch hole in here. Right on this seam, so I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. That would be good. Next thing to do is to get this baby set up on the bandsaw. Let's head over there. All right, let's see how this is going to work out. Fire it up. That didn't work out half bad. Not bad. Perfect circle? No, 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 no. People say, hey, I made a perfect circle. You find a man that can make a perfect circle, you let me know, and I'll follow him into heaven. But until then, it's not a perfect circle, but it's close enough. Let me show you what I had to do. Um, I discovered that when I tilted my table, the edge of the material actually moved and um, it moved it far enough away from the bandsaw blade to where I was not able to create the kind of back bevel that I want to create here on this edge. It's not going to be much, maybe, I don't know really what I've got the tape, the bandsaw set, it, it's whatever it is, you know, I, I just set it to whatever looked good and that's what I'm going to cut it at. But I had to be able to create this little notch here so that my bandsaw blade could recess in here. What I did was I actually drilled another hole. I can show you. Sorry about the camera movement, but you can see that I had to drill another hole. It's kind of difficult to see with that light shining on it, isn't it? But <clears throat> what I've got here are two holes. And this second hole brings me a little bit closer to the bandsaw blade. I, the, the color of that I know is really terrible. I don't have any better lighting, so that's just what I've got. But I had to create two holes there. And when I put the material on that second hole, or, or the pin where that, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. When I put the material on the pin where that second hole is, it puts it too close to the bandsaw blade, and I'm not able to create my cut. So I had to create this notch in order to be able to uh, get the material closer to the bandsaw blade. So let's get it set up over there again and see how we do with this. All right, let's give it a whirl. If I can get through here. She's a thing of booty. Thing of booty. Alright. That accomplished the goal. I, you probably, I don't know if you can really tell. You probably can't really tell. But, I don't know. There's, there's probably a two degree angle on there. Uh, let's see here. How could I even show you that? I don't know if you can even see that on there. Can you see that? Probably not. But, at any rate, there's a little bit of an angle on there. And I think that once I get that all sanded up, and round it over, I think it's going to work real well. It'll at least give the legs a little bit of more relief as they hang over this edge. So that was the whole goal. So the circle cutting jig here seemed to work out all right. All right. I've got a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit chucked up in the hand drill here. 
the backer board to help reduce blowout. So I'm going to just bore a hole all the way through this bad boy. tear out but nothing that I can't live with so okay now on to the next thing here at my cordless miter box I'm going to cut some material that's going to be used as cross braces for the seat. I would highly recommend one of these particular brands, one of these kinds of, of uh, lighter boxes. May not be as fast as the ones that got the cord, but uh, hey, you know what, for what I'm doing here, it's going to work out great. After I cut the cross braces to length, I took the seat outside and set it up on my short man's bench, decided that I would use the leg vise there and round over all the edges with my disc sander. Once I got the edges round over to my liking, I took a 60 grit sanding disc and sanded it to a glassy, smooth finish. I further refined the top edge of the seat by using my laminate trim router set up with a quarter inch roundover bit. The last thing to do is to add the braces to the bottom of the seat. I do this using some weatherproof glue and then I hold the braces in place while the glue dries with some two inch nails. Here's the finished swing seat. Painted it red. I asked the kids what color they wanted it and they couldn't decide so I made the executive decision to paint it red. And uh, all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. I'll show you how I attached the rope underneath here. As you can see, it's just a dowel with a couple of clamps. The rope goes through there and goes around the dowel. Real simple, nothing real major. So I think one thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna add some, some clear Tigon tubing to this rope because what it can tend to do, I think it's gonna end up having, uh, it's going to end up putting blisters on the hands of my kids, and so they're not going to want that. So I think I'm going to get some Tigon tubing um, and, and put it on the rope there. So let's give this thing a whirl. Let's see how, how it works out. So, I think that's going to work. 
I think it's going to support the weight of my kids real well. And it was fun to build. Thanks for watching.